Hello. So now that we have gone over FIR filters, finite impulse response filters, and IIR filters, infinite impulse response filters, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of filter design in MATLAB. Now, you're already familiar with the function FIR1 to find the filter coefficients um, for a particular FIR filter using the window method. And this function, you recall, you give the filter order, the cutoff frequency in, in normalized frequencies, and it gives you the filter coefficients. You also have the function FIR2, for which you can provide an arbitrary frequency response, like here. Let me just actually run this part of the code. And you get, so over here the frequency at zero, the magnitude is one, at 0 0.6 is one, at 0 0.6 then is zero, and at one is zero. And this is the normalized frequency. And so in blue you have the ideal, in red you have the filter that was designed with this function, characterized by the filter coefficients. Okay, very easy. These are FIR filters. Now for infinite impulse response filters, You have the Butterworth filter. And this gives you the, the maximum flat pass band. If you need to improve the, minimize the transition band, meaning improve the roll off, you can allow some ripple either in the pass band or in the stop band. And so that's what you have with the Chevy Chef one. So faster roll off, but now you have some ripple. Um, or with the Chevy Chef 2, where you have ripple in one case in the pass band, in the other case in the stop band. Or if you allow, if you allow ripple both in the pass band and in the stop band, you have the elliptical filter, which has the faster roll off um, by allowing ripple in both of them. And those you can control how much ripple. So these are the functions that, that you should know in order to design the filter coefficients, the B coefficients for, I, for FIR filters and the B and A coefficients for IIR filters. And then you can use freq C to find the frequency response and the function filter or field fill to apply it. Incidentally, you can also do the frequency response with the FFT. Is the, like the FFT of the B coefficients gives you the frequency response because effectively, you're applying the discrete Fourier transform of the impulse response, or in the case of an IIR filter, you do it both to the B coefficients and, and the A coefficients. You realize, you do help freq C, this is exactly what the freq C function is doing. You realize it's applying, um, it's estimating the discrete time Fourier transform of the numerator and then the discrete time Fourier transform of the denominator. So you can do this by doing the FFT of the B coefficients divided by the FFT of the A coefficients in an IIR filter. Okay. And these are the functions that you are ordinarily going to use in your code. Now, MATLAB also has a filter designer. And I'm just going to show it so that you know that it is here and uh, we can actually use it to make sure that some of these concepts of the differences between IIR filters, FIR filters, and the differences between the different types of IIR filters are well understood. So let's go and design, by design, we mean giving a set of specifications, frequency response specifications, the design process involves obtaining the coefficients, okay? the B and A coefficients. B coefficients, is an, if it is an FIR filter, B and A coefficients, if it is an infinite impulse response filter. So in this case, let's assume that our sampling frequency 
uh, it is 8,000, as an example, 8,000 hertz. That's what you will see, for instance, in, in certain audio applications where you sample at a frequency. And let's imagine that we want to cut everything above. So the maximum frequency in this application is half the max, half the sampling frequency, so 4,000. Let's imagine that we want to cut everything above uh, 1,500 hertz. So I want to say the pass band is up to 1,500 hertz. I want that the stop band at 2,000 hertz, I have an attenuation and we specify here, I'm going to say in dBs, 80 dBs. Notice this is a very high performance filter that we are trying to attain. Just think about your basic analog electronics or analog uh, circuits, uh, filters that you design, like an RC uh, low pass filter or an active filter with op amps. If you recall, we went 20 dBs per decade. So if you were at 1,500 hertz, you will be 20 dBs down, not at 2,000 hertz, but at what? One order, a tenth order, right? So it will be at 15 um, kilohertz. So let's do this. I'm going to design, in this case, an FIR filter. And there are different types of them. I'm going to just use, in this case, the Equiripple. And um, let's go ahead and design it. I'm specifying, instead of specifying the order, in which case you specify the order, and, um, and it's going to do the best possible frequency response for you, I'm going to say, find the minimum order for these characteristics, meaning something that the passband is up to 1,500 hertz, and uh, I want to attenuate at a lot, uh, 80 dBs by 2,000 hertz. Let's design it. So there we got it, right? The frequency axis is in kilohertz. We have seen that, and this, that uh, indeed the, the passband goes to 1.5 kilohertz, and at 2 kilohertz, we are 80 dBs down. Now, the fact that we have <clears throat> in the stop band this ripple, if you will, this is due that we are we have we're having zeros, right? And so there are some frequencies where we are nulling them completely. Remember that in an FIR filter, we only have zeros. Now, are we concerned about this behavior in the in the stop band? No. If you realize we all those frequencies are already attenuated by 80 dBs. Right? So we met our design requirement. The fact that some of those are completely eliminated is, is not a problem for us. So, okay, what was the order required? You see here that the structure of this filter is a direct form finite impulse response filter. The order is um, 40. It is stable. All FIR filters are stable. And let's look at a little bit about uh, something. So this is the frequency response. One of the most important characteristics of FIR filters is number one, they are always stable. They have warranty stability. Why is that? Because they have a finite number of filter coefficients, a finite input response. And if you recall, one of the tests of stability was the big input response, absolute value. You sum it from minus infinity to infinity. If it is less than infinity, it is stable. So while you don't have warranty stability for infinite impulse response filters, you do have it for finite impulse response filters. So that's one very important advantage of FIR filters. They have warranty stability. The other one is that they have perfect linear phase over the passband, meaning if we do a phase plot, you see that from zero to two kilohertz, the, the phase is perfectly linear. 
And so, um, and actually, let's look at both of those. So, in blue, you have the magnitude response. In red, you see the phase response. It is perfectly linear in the passband. Okay, and that means that you're going to have a constant group delay, and all this is great. Now, this is the frequency response. The filter coefficients, which is equals the impulse response, is the inverse Fourier transform of this um, frequency response, right? Or you could say the frequency response is the Fourier transform. Ideally, the discrete time Fourier transform, practically you can do this with the discrete Fourier transform, calculated with the fast Fourier transform of what? Of the frequency coefficients, right? Of the impulse response. Frequency response, what we are seeing here, is always the Fourier transform of the impulse response. So let's look at the impulse response. And it is not a surprise. Do you realize that this has like a sink? nature to it, truncated sink. You're going to say, if you recall, the Fourier transform of the sink was the rectangle, which is like the ideal filter, as well as the Fourier transform of the rectangle was the sink. So the, due to duality, you see this behavior. So these are the filter coefficients that we are going to use to the 40 filter coefficients, they are symmetric, as you can see. And these filter coefficients, if we do the Fourier transform, the discrete time Fourier transform of these filter coefficients, or if we do the, uh, the discrete Fourier transform calculated with the FFT, we will see that this is the frequency response. Let's look at the, the, the pole zero plot. And actually, let me zoom in here a little bit. What you see let me actually what we see here is that indeed we only have zeros and we see so at and we see that a significant number of them they are touching the unit circle and they are nulling those frequencies and you see that they start there so you start at zero at pi, that's the half the sampling frequency. So that's that will be if our sampling frequency was eight thousand. At pi is four thousand. At pi over two on the j omega axis, that's the two thousand. So notice that that's the first zero that you have there in the unit circle. There is space there, and those is what you have in the stop band. That nulling behavior with that ripple. Notice that you have zeros inside and outside the unit circle. They do not affect the stability. So this behavior and these zeros is what's going to turn into this ripple in the, in the stop band and that behavior where we have some frequencies that we are nulling completely. There are other FIR filters, like you can design methods, you can use the window method to apply and, and design the filter. When you do the window method, we have to look at what type of window you are using. And you have a significant number of windows, the, the Kaiser, the Bartlett, the Harman, the Hanning, the Bartlett Hanning, the Blackman, the Blackman Harris, etc. So here, uh, do using the Kaiser window, for instance, this is the frequency response. The order increases. It's an order of 81 in this case. Uh, you can look at the impulse response of that filter. Okay, All of these are going to have an impulse response similar to 
a sink function. Because remember, the Fourier transform of the sink gives you that rectangle that is what you're trying to approximate in, in the ideal low pass filter. And here you have the zero ampole plot. And you can see the same thing. You start at the cutoff frequency, you start having a zero that nulls the frequency. And then in the pass band, you have a zeros in both sides of the unit circle. Now, as we saw before, if you plot the phase a response, not only the magnitude response, but the phase response, it is completely linear in the pass band. Okay. Let's do this with the Blackman window. Now, with the Blackman window, oh, and this is, let's make sure that we uh, set up this at 8000 and the cutoff frequency. was 2,000, 1,500. Now in this case, you do not have as many parameters. It's not as good. It's a low fil filter order. Um, this is the impulse response, etc. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do one more. Going to do a, a least squares design. Same thing, 1500, and um, let's go to the design parameters. Filter design. This is with a low order, 10th order. And uh, you can look at the frequency response, the magnitude response, both of them together, frequency response, and mag the phase response being linear over the passband, impulse response, truncated. In this case, we have to specify the order. If we want to increase the order, when we are using the less square or the um, the window method. So in this case, let's do an 81. We're going to see as that we increase the order. Now the impulse response increases, approximates more the impulse, uh, the sync function, and with that we, we improve the frequency response, as you can see. In this case, we can see that the cutoff frequency that is at 1.5 kilohertz, at 2 kilohertz, we are at 80 dBs down. So really good filter. Perfectly uh, linear uh, phase response over the passband from zero to um, two kilohertz, and you can see the zero pole plot. You can obtain the filter coefficients. Incidentally, you can deploy this to a target. Number one, you can generate the C header. Okay, if you're going to implement this. So let me just um, put this in the desktop. Then we have filter coefficients, etc. You can also do a, a, a <coughs> the for ceilings, the coefficients file, you can do an analysis. By the way, before we do that, so here you have the filter coefficient, the fact that this is a direct form FIR filter, the filter length is 82, it is stable, it is type 2, tells you how many multipliers you have in terms of the implementation cost, 82, how many others, 81, how many states, 81. Uh, multiplications per input sample, 82 additions per input sample, 81. Okay. In this application, you can also look at the quantization, uh, like the arithmetic that you are using, whether you're doing single precision, floating point, fixed point, double precision. 
So you do that. Like here with single precision floating point, the the responses are identical, but they can give you the coefficients. If you're going to do the, the fixed point, you need to have the fixed point designer installed. And that enables you to, to, to see if there are any deviations in the frequency response, etc. You can also build a model that then you will use in Simulink if you wanted to use this in Simulink um, for one of your real-time applications, like for instance, in, in, in a software-defined radio or something like that. Okay, so let's go back and design and compare this um, with an infinite impulse response filter. So we are here.